simply learn. Your pace, your place. Hello and welcome to the Introduction to Cloud Security course based on CCSK syllabus offered by Simply Learn. This introductory domain will give us a brief account on the Certificate of Cloud Security Knowledge and its objectives. We will begin by looking into the agenda of this domain in the next slide. In this domain, we will discuss what exactly is Certificate of Cloud Security Knowledge, Cloud Security Alliance, CCSK examination, the objectives of this certification, and the question pattern for this certification exam. In addition, we will also take into account what the tutorial will cover with respect to the exam, list of practice questions for professionals, domain mapping, and other reference materials that are available for the preparation. Moving on, let us understand what Certificate of Cloud Security Knowledge, also known as CCSK, is in the next slide. The Certificate of Cloud Security Knowledge is the industry's first user certification for secure cloud computing. CCSK is designed to ensure that a broad range of professionals with a responsibility related to cloud computing have a demonstrated awareness of the security threats and best practices for securing the cloud. Although it is not mandatory, it is recommended that a candidate should work for at least six months in an environment that markets or relies on IT-related services before appearing for this exam. We will find out more about Cloud Security Alliance in the following slide. The Cloud Security Alliance, CSA, is a non-profit organization with a mission to promote the use of best practices for providing security assurance within cloud computing and to provide education on the uses of cloud computing to help secure all other forms of computing. The Cloud Security Alliance is led by a broad coalition of industry practitioners, corporations, associations, and other key stakeholders. The issues and opportunities of cloud computing gained considerable notice in 2008 within the information security community. At the ISSA CISO Forum in Las Vegas in November of 2008, the concept of the Cloud Security Alliance was born. Following a presentation of emerging trends by Jim Reefis that included a call for action for securing cloud computing, Reefis and Nils Pullman outlined the initial mission and strategy of the CSA. A series of organizational meetings with industry leaders in early December 2008 formalized the founding of the CSA. Outreach of the CSA to the information security community to create initial work product for the 2009 RSA conference resulted in dozens of volunteers to research, author, edit, and review the first white paper. In the next slide, we will discuss the various objectives of CCSK. The exam comprises a total of 60 questions to be answered within the duration of 90 minutes. The passing score is 80% and the exam is offered in English. Although it is not mandatory, a minimum of six months experience in an IT services related organization is recommended. We will now look into the CCSK exam question pattern. The CCSK exam consists of multiple choice questions, which covers all the cloud security domains. In few instances, the question may represent a scenario or a problem description or a description of a situation. There may be two or more questions based on the scenario or problem description or a description of a situation. There is no penalty for wrong answers, no negative marking. All questions can be answered. If one does not pass the test in first attempt, test participants receive two opportunities to pass the test. While the participants may take their second attempt as soon as they wish, we highly recommend studying the source material again prior to taking the test. Because of question randomization, one may see a very different exam with mostly different questions. Let us understand more about this tutorial in the following slide. This tutorial comprises a total of 14 domains, of which this is the introductory one. Apart from introduction to CCSK, 
we have the domains such as cloud architecture, governance and enterprise risk management, legal issues such as contracts and electronic discovery, compliance and audit management, information management and data security, interoperability and portability, traditional security, business continuity and disaster recovery, data center operations and also incident response. Some more important information about this tutorial is discussed in the next slide. In addition to the domains mentioned earlier, we will also look into application security, encryption and key management, identity, entitlement and access management, virtualization, and lastly, security as a service. There are quizzes at the end of each domain. We also provide three set of test papers to make one well prepared for the exam. Let us find out more about the practice questions provided by Simply Learn. In our course, we have provided questions after each key chapters and a set of practice questions at the end of each domain. The practice questions are to indicate how questions could be presented in the exam and should not be used as a source of knowledge. Practice questions may or may not be similar to questions that will appear on the actual exam. Practice questions should not be considered as a measurement of a candidate's ability to answer questions correctly in the exam for that area. Actual exam questions will test the candidate's practical application of the knowledge. We will move on to domain mapping now. Domain 1. Architecture. In this domain, we will understand the definition of cloud computing, essential characteristics of cloud, cloud service, and deployment models available. Additionally, understand about multi-tenancy, CSA reference cloud reference model, Jericho cloud cube model, cloud security reference model, cloud service brokers, and service level agreements. Domain 2. Governance and Enterprise Risk Management Here we will learn about the contractual security requirements, enterprise and information risk management, third-party management recommendations, examining the supply chain, and use of cost savings for cloud. In the next slide, we will discuss mapping Domain 3 and 4. Domain 3. Legal Issues contracts and electronic discovery. In this domain, we will look into the several considerations of cloud-related issues in three dimensions. They are e-discovery considerations, jurisdictions and data locations, liability for activities of subcontractors, and due diligence responsibility. Also, federal rules of civil procedure and electronically stored information, metadata, and litigation hold. Domain 4. Compliance and Audit Management. In this domain, we will define compliance, the right to audit, compliance impact on cloud contracts, audit and compliance scope, compliance analysis requirements, and also auditor requirements. Let us look into the remaining domains. Domain 5. Information Management and Data Security. In this domain, we will look into the six phases of the data security lifecycle and their key elements, such as volume storage, object storage, logical versus physical locations of data, three valid options for protecting data, data loss prevention, detection data migration to the cloud. We will also look into encryption in IAAS. PAAS and SAAS, database activity monitoring and file activity monitoring, data backup, data dispersion, and data fragmentation. Domain 6. Interoperability and Portability. In this domain, we will define portability and interoperability, virtualization impacts on portability and interoperability, Security Assertion Markup Language, SAML, and WS Security. Size of data sets, lock-in considerations by IAAS, PAAS, and SAAS delivery models. 
and mitigating hardware compatibility issues. Let us move on to the next domains in the next slide. Domain 7 Traditional Security, Business Continuity and Disaster Recovery Here we will learn about 4 Ds of Perimeter Security, Cloud Backup and Disaster Recovery Services, Customer Due Diligence Related to BCMDR, Business Continuity Management, Disaster Recovery Due Diligence, Restoration Plan and about the physical location of cloud provider. Domain 8 Data Center Operations In this domain, we will look into relation to cloud controls matrix, queries run by data center operators, technical aspects of a provider's data center operations customer should understand, and logging and report generation in multi-site clouds. The next two domains are discussed further. Domain 9 Incident Response here we will learn about the factors allowing for more efficient, effective containment and recovery in a cloud, main data source for detection and analysis of an incident, investigating and containing an incident in an infrastructure as a service environment, reducing the occurrence of application level incidents, how often should incident response testing occur, and lastly about offline analysis of potential incidents. Domain 10 Application Security In this domain we will understand Identity, Entitlement and Access Management IDEA, Software Development Lifecycle SDLC Impact and Implications Differences in SPI Models Consideration when performing a remote vulnerability test of a cloud-based application Categories of Security Monitoring for Applications and Entitlement Matrix now we will move on to the next two domains. Domain 11 – Encryption and Key Management Here we will learn about adequate encryption protection of data in the cloud, key management best practices, location of keys, keys per user and relationship to tokenization, masking, anonymization and cloud database controls. Domain 12 Identity, Entitlement and Access Management In this domain, we will look into relationship between identities and attributes, identity federation, relationship between policy decision point, PDP, and policy enforcement point, PEP, SAML and WS federation, and provisioning and authoritative sources. The last two domains are explained in the next slide. Domain 13 – Virtualization Here we will learn about security concerns for hypervisor architecture, VM guest hardening, blind spots, VM sprawl, data commingling, instant on gaps, in motion VM characteristics that can create a serious complexity for audits, how virtual machine communications bypass network security controls, VM attack surfaces and compartmentalization of VMs. Domain 14 Security as a Service. We will look into 10 categories Barriers to developing full confidence in security as a service. When deploying security as a service in a highly regulated industry or environment, what should both parties agree on in advance and include in the SLA? Additionally, logging and reporting implications. How can Web Security as a Service be deployed? And what measures do security as a service providers take to earn the trust of their customers? Here is a list of reference material that can be used as a reference for exam preparation and for a better understanding of the subject. With this, we have concluded the introductory domain on Certificate Cloud Security Knowledge. Thank you.